part of what made it feel special was coming back to England and being mm -hmm. denied it. And then you feel something's been taken away, and then you realize you had something that you no longer have. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when yeah. Sue moved back to this country, um, there weren't even civil partnerships at that point, and we were legal strangers. Mm -hmm. And this just seemed outrageous and intolerable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any heterosexual couple, British heterosexual couple, who'd gone to Canada, got married, would just have come back as a married couple, no question. And here we were, and we were being told, you're unrelated mm -hmm. when we came back. Um, and then within a few months, the government brought in the Civil Partnership Act for same-sex couples, and it looked as if... A bill. It was a bill at that point. All right, it was a bill, it was discussed, it went through Parliament, it became an act, came in December 2005. And um, we were told, right, your marriage will be deemed a civil partnership in England and Wales. So we contacted so. Liberty, which is the um, civil liberties organisation, human rights organisation, and um, as many gay organisations as we could to see if they'd support us. Liberty did, Peter Tatchell's organisation, which was then called Outrage, did, Stonewall did not. <laughs> Um, as usual, um, <laughs> as usual, the sort of people I expected to support me did not. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, what was wrong with civil partnerships? You're putting down people in civil partnerships. You're acting like you think you're better than them because you've got a marriage. No, I don't think no, so, but anyway. Um, so Stonewall did not campaign for same-sex marriage until the very final end of the campaign. That took another campaign to get them on board, yes. but that's, that's no. another story. So, so we did get... Somehow we got Liberty who paid the, for the lawyers and mm -hmm. the barristers and the legal fees and, and, and Peter Tatchell who did a lot of publicity and those sort of... And advised us on how to work with the media which was not something we'd had much experience of. And sort of ethical support for it, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. in a situation where you're thinking, well, you know, do I really care about marriage? No, but I care about equality. equality. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been deprived of equality. That's, that hurts. So, so we brought the case. Um, it was heard before the High Court. With um, they, they brought in the most senior judge, the president of the High Court, Sir Mark Potter. Um, the government intervened. It didn't have to, but it chose to intervene to oppose recognition of our marriage. Um, and the judgment came from Sir Mark Potter after a three-day hearing that we were indeed discriminated against compared with heterosexual couples and that that discrimination was justified, in his view, under human rights legislation, in order to protect the heterosexual nuclear family. So we lost. How was, that, how was that moment? Well, we knew that our chances of winning were extremely slim, so it wasn't a surprise. Um, but we did what? hope we might have got a declaration of incompatibility, mm. which would have been a sort of medium ground the judge could have taken. And that's, I think, what the barrister was hoping for. Mm. Yeah. And so what we did basically was orchestrate the media stuff around losing the case to try and um, highlight the injustice. I mean, the, the judge said some things that were pretty clear we're going to incense the lesbian and gay community. <laughs> so he said, we, we can't have our Article 8, the right to um, family private, and fam private and family life breached because we are not family. So we wrote a statement for the press saying, guess what, you know, <laughs> lesbian couples, gay couples are not families. Unless they have children. They might, he didn't rule out the yeah, possibility okay. that we might have but been he said we, kids. He said we were not a family, so we couldn't have our rights breached. Yes. Um, and that thing about protecting the nuclear family, that was... Yes. That, and and also, he also says something about children do best if they're brought up by a man and a woman in a traditional nuclear family. So he basically said a lot of things that were, whatever your view on marriage, you were not going to warm to Sir Mark Potter if you were lesbian. Mm -hmm. so that and I think people, yeah, who didn't support our case particularly, were astounded by the tenor of the judgment, mm -hmm. that it was so conservative. I mean, you know, we're talking 2006. It's yes, mm -hmm. it's not a lifetime ago. So there was a lot of publicity when we launched the case and then when we lost the case. Um, and we analysed it. We analysed our conversations with people. We, 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 I 
kind of we did discourse analysis by that, by yeah. that way, yeah. kind of, to look at the ways in which our case and cases generally were being presented in the media and public discourse. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we were particularly interested in looking at why civil partnership was being presented as enough in some countries and, and completely unacceptable in others. And we had a very, we had a unique perspective on that, I think. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard to convince the English lesbian gay movement that they had anything less than hit the jackpot with civil partnerships. I, I, I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of our friends, even, who agreed with us. Mm. I mean, lots of our friends go way back. They're radical, lesbian, separatist, feminists. You know, they didn't want marriage. They thought we were bizarre to be, A, to have done it, but B, to have fought for it and mm. put ourselves on the line in this way. 